the word Devi in Sanskrit means the one who makes you aware of things. Divyate Prakashate Anaya Iti Devi. By her is lighted up the whole thing. It's not the light that we normally think of, but it is the light which makes the light and darkness also seen. So what is that Jyotisham Jyotihi? And that is only consciousness. You go to sleep, where is this world? The consciousness is not there, the world is not there. So consciousness lights up the whole world and that is the concept of Devi. The Divine Mother is the source. The worlds come out of her, exist because of her and then return back into her. She is the stage upon which the play of the world goes on. She is wisdom, bliss and consciousness incarnate. Consciousness is the mother or the womb from which the whole material world appears. The father is transcendent. It can't be seen, it can't be known, it just exists. The mother is the main principle of the, the manifesting and becoming aware is the womb from which the whole thing has come. The Kamakya, the womb of the universe. Everything has come from that womb. Aham Rudre Virvasabhisharami Aham Aditya Ruta Vishwadehi. I am all the Rudras. I am all the Aditya, the sons. I am all the earth elements. So we see the goddess, not only in the human beings, but in rocks, in mountains, in rivers, in trees, in serpents, and in birds. So in all these things we see the, the manifestation of the, the transcendent, uh, and becoming manifest and becoming the goddess. So our goddess is uh, not limited to uh, human figure or anything like that. What is the sacred feminine? And why have we forgotten her in the world today? We are so disconnected from nature and the cycles of the earth, of the cosmos, of ourselves, of realizing that the cycles outside of us are the same as the cycles within us. In southern India, a very unusual and critically important experiment in consciousness is underway. For the past 38 years, a most remarkable man, Guruji Amritananda, has been building a city dedicated to Devi called Devipuram. This is no ordinary man either, a nuclear physicist who had a spiritual awakening at the age of 47. And his vision? nothing short of bringing the sacred feminine energy back to life in the minds and hearts of people all over the world. Guruji Amritananda was born Prahlad Shastri in 1934 in the small port city of Vishakapatnam in southern India. By the age of five, Guruji was seeing mystical patterns and signs in nature around him. He also had the gift of a photographic memory, allowing him to see and memorize everything he read. At the age of 11, everything changed for Prahlad. I was looking at the sky and I saw um, suddenly some large globules coming uh, and at me, coming at me and entering me, coming at me and entering me. And I was afraid and immediately I fell, became unconscious. I think it was my first experience of my Samadhi. It was wrongly diagnosed as a physical ailment and treated wrongly. Following this experience, Prahlad lost all interest in spirituality and became a dedicated student of science at AVA College. He then went on to do his BSc at Andhra University and his master's degree under the tutelage of the legendary nuclear physicist Swami Gyananand. On August 7, 1957, Guruji married Anuparna Gunturu. He was 24 and she was 17. See, when we 
about 11, about 10, 11. Uh, she came once to my house and I fell in love with her. Uh, but I, the, the stage, it was strange, I think it is arranged by the goddess that uh, I should marry a person. And uh, love at that age is not normal. It must have been predetermined in some way or other. Guruji and Amma had three daughters, Ananta Lakshmi, Radha and Rama, or as Guruji likes to call them, his three goddesses. In 1956, Guruji Amritananda was offered a place at the prestigious Tata Research Institute in Bombay. His work was recognized as advanced theoretically. In 1978, Guruji Amritananda had a most unusual and divine experience that would prove to be the turning point in his life. I woke, got up at 4 o'clock and started walking blindly. And I found some steps going up to the Nobel Pahad in uh, Hyderabad. And I saw the, the Bala Murthy there in front. There was an old man in front of me who prostrated before me. That somehow acted as a trigger for me. And at that time I prostrated for me without knowing what I was doing. I had a thrill going through my body. Harpulation all over the body and I was seeing a vision of the Bala Tripa Sundari in, in my mind's eye. And then I came back and I started thinking, maybe I'm missing out something on uh, uh, ignoring the spiritual aspect. And that was the transformation point. Guruji began to sit and meditate for the first time in over 35 years. And after some time, I blanked out. I did not know. I became unconscious. And suddenly there was an explosion. As if, you know, a bomb has been placed in my heart and a huge emanation of light came. I felt I was being, bits and pieces of me were being thrown out to the ends of the galaxies. Then she appeared with in front of me. I asked her, what is it? What's happening to me? She said, I'm giving you an experience, take it. You learn through the experiences. And she said, if you, if you are ever in trouble, think of me and I'll be there for you. The construct of rationality that Guruji had built his entire scientific life began crumbling away. And step by step, Devi was giving him information and experiences that were beyond space and time, beyond matter and energy, and could only be described as universal consciousness. So, I needed some where to begin, where to begin and how to, how to go about the imaginations or views, visions she's showing, showing me. Will you build this temple for me, this temple for me, this temple for me? Very, very complicated designs like Angkor Wat and stuff like that. I said, I can't handle that kind of a thing. You show me something simpler. Okay, then she showed me this, uh, this form of the Chakramiru that is uh, there now. It just seems doable. I say, okay, fine. Then we'll fix on that. I asked her, where do you begin? She said, you conduct a yajna. Conduct a ritual, sacrifice, uh, for uh, 15 days. Following the yajna, Guruji miraculously received a gift of three acres of land. This would one day become Devipuram. I found a, this triangular formation of a triangular cut in the, in the rock. This resembled the Kamakya, Yoni Pete. I thought this was a good place to start begin with. And I was looking for a confirmation. After fourth day or fifth day, I was deep in meditation and I found jingling bells of a of a girl, ankle, anklets moving. A huge ball of light was there. And that condensed into an iridescent form of the, of the goddess surface. And the surface was like, you know, in the Shri Suktam, there is Hiranyavarnam, Harinam, Subarna Rajasa Srajam. Like thin threads of um, gold and silver. Subarna Rajasa Srajam. It was uh, made out of, out of electric shocks that were uh, going around, that was that form. 
It was a fabric, and I, I later on connected with the fabric of the cosmos. She looked like a 16 year old girl. She was filled with the ornaments. She was like a bridal attire. She said, will you do puja to me? I said, what higher fortune can I have than doing puja to you? Then she did something very unexpected. She bowed down to my feet and I was surprised. You are going to be a guru and your people are going to bow down on your feet. I am in all the people. This is the significance of that. She said, looked at the sky and the clouds formed around that place. And then there was rain. And with the rain, in the rain we walked to the, she took me uh, by hand and walked to the place where this is the place where you got to set up the Meru temple for me. I am the mother and is going to be the child. And the mother Kamakya here. Yeah. And uh, this is a child, it will have uh, Raja Rajeshwari, Raja Mahathir Vasundari at the center. It will be the form of a Meru with all the Khadgamara deities installed in their places. And everything should receive puja every day. Then she took me back and completed the puja. And she vanished back into the rocks. Today, Devipuram is the laboratory of consciousness and people from all over the world are drawn there in their quest to connect to their own divine nature. Devipuram has the Sri Chakra as its center. There's a temple of Sri Chakra built exactly in the form of Sri Chakra showing all the 108 Shakti Peters in physical form as well as embedded in a geometrical form. This is the first Sri Chakra in the whole world where you can actually walk into and see the forms of the goddess and interacting with them, sit in front of them, meditate on them, do puja to them, do homes in front of them and do upasana for each of these uh, deities. I see it like a, a jewel set in a lotus. A jewel in a lotus. We call it Manidvipam. I had a vision of this Manidvipam. The Manidvipam looks like the body of the goddess. From the Shiva hill to the, the, the temple, it's all one body. The, the face, then the, the breast, and then the, at the navel, this, uh, this one is there. Just, just go and be in tune with nature. I want people to come enjoy spirituality naturally and in nature in resonance with that and let their finer instincts come up. That was the vision I had. I am in the business of happiness. If I exist, it's to make everybody happy. That's, that's my purpose of life.